we all know about Dame Dalla. He's one of the best point guards in the league, one of the best players in the NBA in general. He is currently carrying his team to the fourth best record in the West, and the Blazers have won the last six games straight. You might be asking yourself, well, this is all good, but why should we care? Why should he be the MVP conversation? Let me explain. What's going on everybody? It's Void DC NBA here and today we are back with another video and in today's video we are going to be talking about why I think Damian Lillard should be in the MVP conversation and if you guys enjoy this video please make sure you like, comment, subscribe and turn on the notification bell to never miss a video. But without further ado, let's get right into this. Um, so the reason I think that Lillard should be in the MVP conversation is is because of all the injuries that his teams um, had to face throughout so far this season and how he's just been able to carry this team to wins night in and night out. Um, so let's just start off with the first one. Um, so on December 30th, Zach Collins um, got ankle surgery and has been out ever since. His return is um, not known at this time. Then on January 15th, Yusuf Nurkic injured his wrist and he has been out for the last four weeks and he will be out for at least four more weeks. Uh, we do not know his return yet. And then lastly, on January 19th, CJ McCollum injured his foot and has missed the last month. Um, he is going to make a return soon when we are not sure yet. Um, but it, the injury said it should be only four weeks, so he should be back soon. So, with this being said, um, you might think, wow, the Blazers lost a top 10 center, they lost a top 10 shooting guard, they're going to be in trouble. But it's been the complete opposite, actually. Um, the Blazers have been 10 and 4 since CJ has gone down with his injury, and Dave, that's good enough to bring them to fourth in the um, Western Conference. For reference, the record before this was eight and six. So what this means is that Damian Lillard has been killing it. Um, his stats since January 19th have been 31.6 points per game, 8.8 .8 assists per game, 4.1 rebounds per game, 1.2 seals per game, while shooting 46.1% from the field, 39.7% from three on 11 and a half attempts per game, and then 91.9% .9 from the free throw line on almost eight attempts per game. That is fantastic. Um, yeah, um, his numbers have been crazy. Um, the amount of threes that this man has been taking is ridiculous, and the efficiency he is scoring at is incredible for someone who's taking almost 12 threes a game. Um, and don't get me wrong, he has not been the only guy on this team that has been scoring, um, because one other player has been also been killing it. Um, his name is Gary Trent Jr., who has stepped up big time for this team in the absence of C.J. McCollum. He's currently averaging 19.3 points per game, 45% um, from the field, and 46% um, from three ever since C.J. went down. That's that's good. That's fantastic for him, especially because um, he was viewed as a role player this season, and for him to step up and make that leap is incredible. But, you know, that's all in good. Um, Lillard got someone else who can score the ball because obviously they're going to need that. Um, but the thing is, is that Gary Trent's really good at scoring and shooting and he's a very good defender also, but Damian Lillard still has all of the responsibility on this team, um, playmaking wise. And obviously in the clutch, you're giving the ball to Damian Lillard, not to Gary Trent. I'm sorry. Um, and he's also one of the only ball handlers on this team also. So this man has to have the ball a lot of the time. It's kind of insane. And what I think is so incredible about Damian Lillard and his stats, um, not even his stats, just like the, well, the stats and also how good the Blazers have been, is that teams are able to game plan for Damian Lillard, um, especially without CJ and Yusuf Nurkic. 
it's very simple to just um, call double Sir um, Lillard and trap him because he's the only main scoring option for the team. Um, a lot of these players on this team cannot go off the dribble and they don't have a lot of shot creation um, like they did with CJ and Nurkic. So um, it's very easy to just game plan and make someone else besides Lillard beat you, like Gary Trent or Mello. Um, and yet, somehow Lillard's efficiency has actually went up compared to the season as a whole, which blows my mind, by the way, but it's been fantastic. Um, and yeah, just another thing to kind of just can make you consider him being an MVP conversation um, is that Lillard's on-off numbers are plus 13.5. And what this means is that when he is on the court, his team is outscoring the other team by 13.5 points. For reference, this season, LeBron's is at plus 9.5. Jokic's is at um, plus 9.6. And Embiid's is at plus 16.6. So compared to the top three MVP candidates... He is more valuable on the court than two of them. So, there it is. I rest my case on why I think Damian Lillard should be in the MVP conversation with all the injuries that his team had to deal with, with all of the game planning and preparation beforehand for games. He's still gone out and been fantastic for this team when he is not on the court his team suffers he is more valuable than two of the top three mvp candidates i think he should be in the conversation um let me know what you guys think um let me know what your guys top three mvp candidates so far in the season are in the comments below if you guys enjoyed this video uh go check out my personal channel um dan came 29 the link will be in the description also go check out my podcast Link will be in the description for that. Me and my friends actually are going to be posting a new episode today if you want to go check that out after this. Um, also, all my socials will be down in the description. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.